few weeks ago, I had the, the privilege of driving up to Chicago to see some old friends. Friends that had been a part of a congregation we worshipped in when we lived abroad. We got word that our pastor was coming to town. Um, she lives in Brazil. She's Brazilian, so it was not a, a small thing. We didn't necessarily anticipate ever seeing her, but she was invited to speak on uh, solidarity and the Lutheran tradition at a conference um, up at DePaul. Um, both Lutherans and Catholics here in this anniversary year are listening to and hearing from one another in really interesting ways. So she was there to do that, and we said, well, we got to get together. And so some people drove from the west, west side, and we were all going to meet in the city at the seminary. That seemed like a real easy meeting point, and I thought, well, this is great. It was going to be late in the evening. We could make sure that you know, family things were taken care of, and then I could hop in the car. And, you know, I live there. I know the way. This is great. So I get in the car, and you know, I thought, well, just in case, I'll put the phone thing on in case I miss my exit. There's some construction, and sure enough, everything's going smoothly, and, and I'm lazy, so I take the Skyway, and I get off at Stony Island, and it's just really a straight shot. Super simple. So I turn off the phone lady who's telling me where to go because I don't need her. So I, you know, I'm going, I'm going, this is great. Yeah, no, she wants me to turn there, but I know that it's, it's over that way. So I'm not going to, no. Turned her off, and I am I'm going kind of with my gut. I lived here. I know, I know this street here connects to over there, so it should be no problem. I forget, of course, that there are an awful lot of one-way streets around there. And so, you know, my shortcut is not a shortcut, but a long cut. And I have turned about three times following my gut, thinking that I know where I'm going, and I, you know, I've got both the way and the destination fixed firmly in my mind. Not so much. We think we know the way, don't we? We all have the way that feels like, oh, this is what my gut is telling me, is this is going to be it. This is the thing. You know, maybe it's seven habits that will make you highly effective. Or maybe it's clean eating, or it's all the steps for leaning in, or manning up, or decluttering your life, or ten commandments that will make you feel utterly perfect, or if you're a student, maybe the way that seems right is do all the things. I don't know uh, about you all, but we're noticing that uh, junior high is coming and after high school, and as I watch our high schoolers in the congregation and how well they are involved in so very many things that give them joy and also suck the life out of you, I get the sense that um, that's a way that the world tries to sell us. Do all the things. Be all the things. Or if you are a resident of the modern world, perhaps of the town of Valparaiso, you may get the message that the way we are supposed to follow is to be happy all the time, even if we don't feel that way. And to be together all the time, even if that has nothing to do with reality. Because we are good, we are doing well, this is a successful, happy place with great parks and great schools, and it's all great. Or if you're into politics, then you may have found your way or been pulled into the way which is be right, be angry, follow your leader no matter where that might take you, no matter how alarming it might be, be louder, right? We are sure we know the way. We're sure enough that we are often willing to be that guy that holds the coats while other people throw rocks at an innocent person, right? We are so sure. But the truth is none of those ways actually help us feel like we're on firm footing. You can tell by the frantic way that we hang on to them, can't you? Or the way that we jump from one to the next to the next, hoping we're going to find the right one. It's exhausting. We think we know the way. We also think we know the destination, right? I can prepare my own place, thank you. Right? I can get things settled the way I would like them to be, thank you. I will move to a safer neighborhood. I will make sure I've got more secure investments and better friends and a closer family, and I will make my own place. I will have whiter teeth and a better tan, and I will even move to a new country if I need to, right? That is the American 
myth, the American history, is that we have picked up from wherever we came from, because it wasn't here, to make things new, to make a place for ourselves that was better somehow. But the truth is, are you there yet? Do you feel like you're there? Are you safe and secure and everything is great now? Because that's not usually how it goes, right? So often, sin and evil kind of ride alongside something really good that God has given us, don't they? So our families are a blessing and a gift and so wonderful, and sin and evil ride alongside and say, and they are the only thing. And if you don't have one or it's not the way you wanted it to be, you are nothing. And if you do have one, you had better do it like you mean it, like Pinterest and, and competitive grandparenting. and <coughs> Sin does that. It sneaks right alongside something good. And so there was a, a perfectly lovely thing God has given us, but we found a way to take it way off track. You know, and it's the same with food or with things that give us joy over and over, right? Anything good, we can find our own way to make that into something else entirely. And so we get this psalm that says, into your hands I commit my spirit. And we get Cece and her family who have said, you know what, maybe this, this whole following Jesus thing isn't something you do on your own. And maybe we need backup. And maybe we need help helping her follow Jesus. And so we need to put her in God's hands. Right? Jesus says, in my Father's house, that's where the safety is. That's where the security is. I turned left, and I turned left, and I turned left. It turns out there's sort of a circle of one-way streets that you can go around there in Hyde Park for a good long while. And I kind of saw a grocery store that I thought, oh yeah, I remember that. I don't remember how to get from there to where I needed to be. Here's this street that I'm really confident is the one I need, but I cannot go that direction on this street. So I'm kind of off, and somehow I'm in some alleys, and my phone rings. My friend is calling me to say, hey, where are you? Let me talk you through it. I still live here. No matter how hard I tried to do it my way, it wasn't going to work, right? That street was never going to go there. But he called me. And friends, the truth, well, the truth is the truth. And the way and the life, those find us, right? I cannot put myself on the path that is the way with the capital W. And you cannot possibly speak the truth with a capital T because sin rides right alongside, right? And none of us have found the life with a capital L no matter how hard we try. It found us. Thomas and Philip and you and I are all the same. We say, Jesus, what are you talking about? I don't know where you're going. This is confusing. I'm feeling lost. I'm anxious. This moment that we get in the gospel is Jesus last night with his disciples. This is Maundy Thursday. He has washed their feet. He said, guys, it's not going to go well. And they're all, what do you mean, Jesus, it's not going to go well? What, what, are you, what are you talking about? Right? And Judas has run off, and there's this sense of betrayal. And where are you going, Jesus? And can you give us a map or at least, you know, give us a picture of what God looks like that we can hold in our hands and hang on too tight? And you know what? When you go, we're going to be three steps behind you, Jesus didn't work that way, right? They stayed three steps behind until it got a little rough, and then they ran. And we're the same. We can try to hold on with all our might to the God of the universe, but given the opportunity, we are going to cut and run in no time. But Jesus, Jesus, the way came to us. The truth of God has shown up in flesh on our doorsteps. And that life it's not a destination. It's nice that we have this at funeral services and we talk about the way that there is room in the Father's household for us, but that's not just then. There is room in the Father's household for us because the Son has come and set up housekeeping here on earth with us. The life isn't a destination, Jesus says. Don't you know me? It's a relationship. It's one that stretches from now through eternity, but it starts now. Don't you know me? He says, I'm right here. That line in the psalm, into your hands, 
I commit my spirit. Maybe that sounded a little familiar to me. It sounds a little bit what like Stephen says, right, as he has his last moments of life. And it's what Jesus says as he has his last moments of life because the truth of it is that the way comes to us, right? Jesus has come to us in flesh and blood. Jesus has come to us in word and in splashy water. Jesus always comes to us. No matter what road I take and go around in circles, no matter what way seemed so promising and has brought you up against a brick wall, Jesus comes to us. And the good news is that when our way looks like a complete dead end, like Stephen's, dead with a capital D, you know, that's the end, still God is present. Still we are in God's hands. And that's not the end for us, but that's also not the end for what God is doing in the world. Because there Saul is holding everybody's coats, right? He is the bad guy's toady, right? He's not even one of the rock throwers. He's not that good. He's kind of the whiny guy over to the side that everybody says, here, hold my coat. And God is going to take that guy and change everything. He's going to take that guy and say, you're the one. I'm going to send this love and this good news and show up in the lives of people that you never thought were even possible, all the Gentiles, because of you. So it's never a dead end. It's never the last word, because the only one that speaks that word is Jesus. And he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And he comes and he finds us. Thanks be to God.